beautiful early morning in aviation and we're doing a oxygen service on a hawker which unlike just about everybody else that I know of they decided to stick the oxygen model in the tail or at least the charging port where you fill it that high pitched whistle or hum or whatever you want to call it is the filling valve actually being pushed open by the pressure of the oxygen here the pitch is changing which means it's dropping down and we got to continue to recharge this bottle so the hose all the way back going to the back of the van <clears throat> and here we have our oxygen bottle and regulator which increase the pressure here we actually have a brand new bottle at this point so we really don't need the oxygen booster, but that's the way everything is set up here, so we're using it. And you don't want to ram too much pressure at once into an oxygen bottle when you're filling it. Or you can actually cause it to overheat and explode. Because this right here is getting incredibly cold. Because this is a high pressure inside of this bottle. And it is actually, at this valve, expanding to a lower pressure, which is what's in these hoses that flow over to the aircraft. As it goes into the bottle and it's compressed, the bottle becomes hot because the air inside of it is being compressed. Get this regulator another twist up. There we go. Continue to fill. Now it's unusual, Hawker does not give us a um, <coughs> A pressure gauge they give us a gauge it just tells like a gas gauge a quarter half full three quarters and full um, most aircraft if you ever come out to service them they're gonna have a gauge that looks something like that and usually it will stop at 2000 and it will have some sort of a red mark or red line at like 1850 ish and then quite often there'll be a pressure chart and it will actually show you different pressures as well because they don't want you to always go to 1850 because at colder temperatures the maximum might actually be a lower pressure because that's actually <clears throat> what 1850 turns into at let's say 50 degrees instead of 70 or uh, they'll even go down to zero or negative numbers negative degrees and they'll tell you if it's at this, then only service the bottle. I, I think I've seen as low as like 1625 at negative 32 or something like that is actually full. If you went to 1850 and it was minus 32 degrees, first of all, you would have froze to death. Anyways, you probably lost your fingers. No, not really, but I've worked in plenty of that. But um, that bottle itself has actually shrunk from temperature and pressure is lower. And when everything expands back to 70 degrees, if you went to 1850 at minus 32, you now have over-serviced the bottle and you're probably going to blow out the safety regulator. There's a little discharge, usually have a green plastic cap over it, and if the bottle over-pressurizes, that valve will let go and that green cap will shoot off, and that is a free flight check on just about every aircraft I know of. But here we have a nit an oxygen booster. Um, we have, this is the line that comes in right here from our tank and it's indicating, let's see we're up to about a thousand right now, that's where we're running. And then if this pump were operating, which it is not right now, this is the outflow that goes to the airplane. This would show you what your bottle pressure in is and what your actual pressure out in your hose to the aircraft is. And on this side of it, we have our, uh, that would be your, it could be shop air, it could like if you're doing this in a hangar, but here in this truck we actually are using a nitrogen bottle. I have it all set up in case I need it. Looks like I may not on this one, but we'll see. Well, I don't know, we're getting close here. This bottle's dropped down now from above 2,000 to down to 2,000. Let's see how much further I can go. So the rule of thumb is you don't want to go more than probably 200 PSI above what um, the aircraft is 
So you don't want to just go all the way, set this thing all the way up to 1850 and then walk away. You'll get an explosion. Um, and I know, I haven't seen too many pictures of explosions, but I know a few years ago at Reno, uh, they blew up one of the, I think, Mustangs by overpressuring the bottle. And I don't know if they just went too high or they went too fast, but it blew up and it wasn't good. It blew the back of the airplane apart. <laughs> And the aircraft could not race, obviously. So, this would normally be your air pressure in, and then just using 90 to 100 psi here, this has a big valve inside of it, a, a compressor piston that goes back and forth, and it would actually um, take 90 psi on this side, and all the way down to usually you can go down about 8 to 500 psi, would be the lowest oxygen you can take and run it all the way up using this valve to get yourself up to 1850, 19, even sometimes for medical oxygen, which technically I'm not supposed to do, but that's what they asked for. Um, 2000, you can actually pull off with only 90 PSI on the side because of the, the way hydraulics and things like that work. And if you don't understand it, study up on how hydraulics work where a low pressure on one side can make a high pressure happen on the other side with volumes and things like that but that's what it is and just another lovely day in aviation oh, we made it up to three quarters of a tank I'm just gonna probably have to put the pump on here pretty soon but we'll get this thing up to full which according to that is 1800 psi but as i said it don't give us any pressure show us a full in your gas gauge. The reason you want to have an oxygen booster is because you'll notice this gauge here. I've got to get this airplane to 1800. Right now my fill bottle is reading 1800 and dropping and that means I'm only at three quarters on the airplane. I will not hit 18. I'd have to go to another bottle and I have worked at places that did not have an oxygen booster. And we went through bottles left and right because a full bottle might come in at 22, 24, somewhere around there, depending on temperature. But you're only going to get so much before it's down to 18, 1850. You really need about 19 in order to get the valve because that valve reduces slightly what can go into it. So that's where you need to have a booster like this. So we'll set it up. Okay. <clears throat> Now we need the booster. I have turned this regulator in all the way, and I am maxed out, but the gauge is not yet full. So, the next thing we're gonna do, is over here on this side, just a little toggle switch. Forward is off. That's on. Now, the piston is going. And, you can see this reacting, but what we're doing here, this right here, like I said, you need a little bit higher than actual 18. So that 1850 is going to get us right up to what we need pretty shortly here. And as you can see, our oxygen gauge is almost full. Just going to go a little bit further, and we'll get what we need. Just the last thing to note is, since this is a service truck and I go on highways and everywhere else, I always have to remove all of these regulators and put the uh, safety cap back on the top of the bottle before departing to make sure that if this van is in, in an accident, uh, these can't be busted off. And uh, <laughs> if you ever seen the aftermath, they go off like a rocket and they will punch through concrete cinder block walls vehicles, buildings, people, anything in their way. And it's the last thing we want to have happen. Not to mention, oxygen is an accelerant and it won't cause a fire, but if there is a spark, it will make it a very big spark.